Hey, all, what's doing? You're hanging with the Niner nut. How are all the 49er fans doing? Red and gold loyalists. Oh, it's been an interesting week to say the least. Unfortunately, if you watched that boring Super Bowl, the Los Angeles Rams were victorious over the Cincinnati Bengals. Man, we just can't catch a break as 49er fans this season. Not only did we lose to them in the NFC Championship game, but the Rams went on to win the Super Bowl at home in at SoFi Stadium. Well, nothing worse than when a division rival wins everything, right? But uh, that being said, hat off to the Rams to an extent. As much as I hate them and still think they're overrated, hat, hat off to head coach McVay. Matt Stafford uh, and Aaron Donald and their whole team. Aaron Donald really played wonderful during that night, as well as Cooper Cup. So, hey, man, you know, there's next year and uh, we'll be right back at it. But uh, I wanted to take this this episode and use it towards the recent wonderful news of former 49er. Actually, I should say always a 49er. Defensive tackle Bryant Young being named to the Hall of Fame, which is just an amazing thing because I don't know how many of you had the opportunity and chance to see him play. In my opinion, he was one of the best defensive tackles that ever played the position. I remember when he was drafted out of Notre Dame, and he was one of those rare players that I talk about a lot that just came into the league and looked like he had been a veteran for many years. He was just such a such a force to be reckoned with. You can move pretty quickly for a big guy, very strong, would disrupt the run, and he would get after quarterbacks, man. Um, and in his first season, of course, he played for what 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 a what a great way to come into the NFL. Not only just to go to the 49ers, but a wonderful 49er team that year in 1994. They ended up going to uh, winning the Super Bowl when they absolutely destroyed the San Diego Chargers. And what a what what a what a wonderful way to make your NFL debut for the season than for a Super Bowl team. He had, um, just looking at his stats that year, again, he came in and just did absolutely damage. Um, six sacks, played all 16 games, started all 16 games, 49 tackles. Just a, a, a phenomenal player, man. Um what a great season that was for those. I don't know how many people were around for that uh, around for that year, but um, it was a phenomenal season. If you ever get a chance, go back and revisit it, uh, the YouTube videos and whatnot. We had everybody there was Steve Young, Jerry Rice, Deion Sanders, Bryant Young, William Barnum, Floyd, Ricky Waters, um, Brent Jones. I mean, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal team. And getting back to Bryant Young, he actually finished third in NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year voting that year, which is crazy because, uh, man, was he a force to be reckoned with. So, um, you know, for the career, 89 and a half sacks, which is, um, which is really good. Not to mention the fact that he made the Pro Bowl four times, All Pro team one time. I uh, was on the Hall of, Hall of Fame All Nineties team. Was the nineteen ninety nine Comeback Player of the Year. I mean, he has all the the awards that were much needed. He has all the awards to his name. And one of the most interesting things about him too was that um, he stayed with one team his entire career which is, again, very rare, and we don't see that a lot. And he also played on various different 49er teams where they had seen different head coaches. He played for George Seifert. He played for Steve Mariucci for various seasons. And he also saw... He also played for teams, 49er teams, that, uh, for the you know, had some 
had some hardship. He also played for head coach Dennis Erickson, which was an absolute disaster of <laughs> disaster. Um, but he also played for head coach Mike Mike Nolan. And again, uh, I think it's very, very interesting and very awesome that he played the duration of his career with us and he spent time on wonderful teams. He spent times on teams that weren't so good, but he was always a force to be reckoned with. He was always more than solid where he was. He went from being part of a wonderful team in 1994 where he had so much just utter amounts of talent around him and i'm sure he learned uh, a lot from some of the veterans on that team such as he had ken norton jr um the great gary Plummer, ricky jackson he teamed uh with dana stubblefield um Dennis Brown, Charles Mann, the great Richard Dent. So I'm sure that he got just a world of experience being around these guys. And then eventually he would go on to be the veteran guy that many would look up to and would help younger players, which is always, which is always a, a wonderful thing and which is always so valuable because these younger guys – obviously look up to a lot of the the veterans who have been in the league for a couple of years and it just makes them so much of a better player I think being around these guys so you take for instance when um when younger players had come to the 49ers I'm sure that they were able to just get a world of knowledge from uh from Bryant Young guys like at the time uh you know, Andre Carter on the Niners. Uh, he was a young guy back in 2002 under head coach Steve Mariucci. And all the, the the young players at the time that came in, uh, I'm sure that they got uh, so much knowledge from a guy like Bryant Young, even in, in his last season in 2007, where the Niners were 7-9 and nine under Dennis Erickson. Um, again, not one of the, well, seven and nine, not too bad, but this wasn't what during the, the great 49er heydays, but, um, you know, again, I'm sure a lot of those players coming in just learned a lot from him. And I had always felt that he was in my opinion, not just because I'm a Niners fan, but one of the best defensive tackles that there were at the position um, was always a threat for the offense and was multi-talented getting after the run and causing pressure in the backfield. And like I said before, very strong up top. Um, so he, he was the total package, man. Played a good amount of time up till he was 35. I think that's a, that's a, 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 a for him, for playing for the position he did and dealing with a lot of the injuries I'm sure he dealt with, that's a that's a great amount of time to play. And again, he's 49 a gold because he's only played with the 49ers. So that really holds a special place in our hearts as fans and uh, I'm sure in the organization's heart as well. He was a lifer, as they call him. 6'3", 291, coming out of college. Um, first round pick, seventh pick overall in the 1994 draft, which was a uh, very interesting draft for the most part. Out of that draft came Marshall Folk, the great Willie McGinnis, Sam Adams, Aaron Glenn, uh, a lot of good players coming out of that draft, man. And that was the same year the Niners had two first-round draft picks in that first round, and they selected William Floyd at fullback and, of course, Bryant Young. And uh, two great moves, man. 
to add to that already uh, already talented team that they were building because that was the year that they had just put it all together under head coach George Seifert. And that's funny that year. If you remember that season correctly, it started off a little shaky. There is that that wonderful uh, that wonderful YouTube video, I believe, that shows uh, with Steve Young and his argument with head coach George Seifert at the time. They were three and one going into a game against the Philadelphia Eagles at the old Candlestick Park, which I really miss, and they got absolutely destroyed, forty to eight. And George Seifert had actually pulled Steve Young out of the game. And you can YouTube that video of Steve Young having an argument with George Seifert. And it's really interesting to see because they shut, they started off very shaky. And again, this was a team that had had so much talent on their team going into the year as they acquired a lot of free agents. And then from that point on, they went on uh, a... Uh, a huge winning streak. They were three and two. They went on a 10 game winning streak, knocking off Detroit, Atlanta, Tampa Bay, Washington, Dallas, the Rams, the Saints, the Falcons, the Chargers, the Broncos, and they lost the uh, season finale to the Vikings. And in the playoffs that year, that was that very famous, um, playoff game that they absolutely destroyed the Chicago Bears 44 to 15 there's that segment where I believe it's safety Sean Gale gets a real cheap shot on Steve Young as he runs into the end zone and he just gets up and spikes the ball right in his face and then you see Jerry Rice William Floyd and the rest of the team just kind of um, engulf the Bears and there's this whole scramble going on and everything and then of course there's that uh, there's that crazy skirmish in the corner, I believe, of the end zone, and you see um, William Floyd take Alonzo Spellman and just toss him like a rag doll. I actually have it on tape, believe it or not, and I would rewind that over and over. They then went on to knock off the Dallas Cowboys, something they haven't been able, they hadn't been able to do, which is a, a, a very famous game. If you get a chance again, YouTube it from the start. It was all Niners. That was the one with the Eric Davis interception. And then at the end of the half, it was the Steve Young touchdown pass to Jerry Rice. And that was the turning of the tide that year. They really had the Cowboys number. And then they went on to absolutely destroy the San Diego Chargers 49 to 26 in the Super Bowl that year, in which Steve Young threw six touchdown passes. So it was a very interesting year. And they were such a high powered offense, um, scoring over 40 points per game in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the games they played that year, including the playoffs in the Super Bowl. And on. Just looking at the the stats for that year, they were they were loaded everywhere. Like I said, Ricky Waters, William Floyd, they had the great Mark Logan, Derek Lowville, Elvis Gerback was a backup that year. Elvis lives, baby. Uh, Dexter Carter, Jerry Rice, John Taylor, Brent Jones, Nate Singleton, Ted Popson, the great Ed McCaffrey. That's right, he was with the 49ers before he was with the Broncos, and. On the defensive side of the ball, they were absolutely, absolutely loaded. Like we said before, with Dana Stubblefield, Bryant Young, Ricky Jackson, Dennis Brown, Richard Dent, who missed a lot of games that season with injury, Tim Harris, Lee Woodall, Charles Mann, the great Merton Hanks, the great Eric Davis, the great Tim McDonald, the great Gary Plummer, of course, Deion Sanders, Toy Cook, Tyrone Drakeford. So these are just uh, 49er greats, 49er, you know, wonderful players. Everybody is familiar with if you are a uh, 49er fan. And um, that offensive line was, was at its best. 
the great Steve Wallace and Harris Barton on the other side, Derek Deese, who was a rookie that year, the always great Jesse Sapolo, and Bart Oates was the center that season. So it was a, re- a very well put together team that year. And again, what's very interesting is that in that lineup we had was four rookies starting, William Floyd, Derek Deese, Bryant Young, and Lee Woodall, but talent just all over the place. When you think of that defensive backfield, Eric Davis and Deion Sanders on both sides, Tim McDonald and Merton Hanks. Wow. And Deion Sanders, six interceptions that year, Merton Hanks, seven interceptions. That's also that famous... It was that season that Deion Sanders did that famous dance as he picked off a uh, pass, took it all the way back. That famous Dion dance that is frozen in time and uh, ever famous. But, yeah, what a, what a great team this was. And Bryant Young was just a huge part of that. It's, 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 I don't want to say it's rare sometimes, but I think that Depending on the position in the team, it can be rare when a rookie comes in and starts. I mean, we see it so many times in the quarterback position where a quarterback will sit on the bench and kind of learn, as we saw in Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady and so many others, Steve Young. And then you have the the, the situation in which a quarterback will come in and, and start at the position, or you'll have another position where a rookie will come in and uh, – play and Bryant Young uh, Bryant Young was one of those guys and to do that has got to be extremely difficult I'm sure but again he's one of the rare guys who came in and was just ready to go and it never stopped so hat off to him it's well deserved that he gets into the Hall of Fame well deserved I think is an, is an understatement it is great to see him join the rest of the 49ers who are in the in the Hall of Fame enshrined for eternity and all such as Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, Ronnie Lott, Steve Young and all the other players that have played for San Francisco. And I think that Bryant Young for the most part is definitely will go down as one of the best defensive tackles in 49er history by far. Um, I don't even, I don't even think it's a, it's a, uh, I don't even think it's an argument to tell you the truth. Um, he will definitely, uh, always be, be remembered for being one of the best at his position. Another very interesting stat is that Brian Young is second on all time Sacks for the 49ers at 89 and a half. He is behind the great Cedric Harmon. And out of that list of players, which goes on pretty long, there are some great names. Tommy Hart, the great Charles Haley, Dwayne Board, Aldon Smith, Justin Smith, Fred Dean, Chris Dolman, Dave Wilcox. Roy Barker, P.S. Holt, DeForest Buckner. He has played the most amount of games at 208, which is a, uh, a very interesting stat. Showed his how he was uh, able to be stable over these years and uh, throughout the years, I should say. So again, it's a it's a testament to who he is and. Uh, Love seeing him get into the Hall of Fame. Well-deserved. And I think he, you know, set the standard for that position for us, really. Um, it'll be interesting to uh, see the ceremony and all the other players that he is going in with. So, again, another 49er enshrined for eternity in the NFL Hall of Fame. Special shout out to Bryant Young, man. Loved watching you play. Um, even through the tough years, you were always a rock. You were always solid as can be. Actually, have uh, have his first game on. Well, I don't have his first game on tape, but I have the first. I have the Super Bowl on tape from '94, and I have his last game on tape actually. Um, 
And those were those were tough shoes to fill when uh, when he had retired, of course. Never, never easy to to f- fill shoes such you know of such a talented player. And um, again, in his last season, they were five and eleven under Mike Nolan. Everything was was changing at the time. They had uh, enjoyed a, a a rather rough period before that. Various losing seasons under De- Dennis Erickson and Nolan. Um, Again, they had gone from Mariucci to Erickson to Nolan. They were still, they were just trying to find the next great head coach for them, which was um, which was interesting yet painful. If you <laughs> if you're a diehard like I am, but it's interesting too that you saw so many good players come along during that time, and you watched them actually try and shape who they would become. During that time, of course, we saw the great Patrick Willis and Derek Smith, Walt Harris, Jeff Olberch, um, so many others, Isaac Sopagoa. So it wasn't until um, you know, Mike Singletary came along in 2009 that they actually went 8-8, eight and eight, but as, as far as a winning season, that didn't come till 2011, of course, under Jim Harbaugh. But uh, this, this was an interesting point in the 49ers history. Like I said, these would be considered some dark days, but they were building, and uh, obviously Bryant Young was at the end of his career when this was happening. But um, what, 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 a, what a career to have. I mean, he kind of did everything he possibly could got the chip now he got the call and the rest is history so just an episode about the great bryant young and if you get a chance go back and youtube a lot of his uh wonderful highlights as you will see for those of you who weren't around to see it uh nine and nut we'll be coming back to you shortly with another episode So please stay tuned, enjoy, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you very much for listening. Peace.